Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Nager. I'm an associate professor of clinical radiology at the University of California, San Francisco. And this module is going to be focused on infections, specifically looking at infections with chest x-rays, also called chest radiograph. So chest radiographs are a great test to see if there might be a pneumonia in the lungs. In a normal chest x-ray like this one, the lungs fill with air, so they're pretty dark. But if there's an infection like this case, which we now see on the bottom of the lungs on the right side of the patient, which is on the left side of the picture, we see increased whiteness. Here, I'll highlight it. That increased whiteness is something filling the lungs, in this case, an infection. So chest x-ray is a good first test to look for pneumonia. Now, before I introduce you to the different types of infections that we will see by chest radiographs, we have to talk a little bit about figuring out where the infection is. This is a really common topic when we talk about radiographs, so I wanted to review it really quickly. If we see increased whiteness towards the top of the lungs on either side, we can be pretty sure this is in the upper lobe on that side. So if there were whiteness in this area that's highlighted, there would probably be a pneumonia in the right upper lobe. For example, here, increased whiteness in the right upper lobe. It actually could be a number of things, but infection is the most common, and that's what we're talking about in this module, right upper lobe pneumonia. Similarly, if we see increased opacity in the upper part of the lung on the other side, that would be a left upper lobe pneumonia. Now, when we get to the bottom of the lungs, it gets a little bit harder. There are actually multiple lobes, so portions of the lung, that make up the bottom part of the lung. So this is something that's discussed a lot. I'm going to introduce you to it. If this is not really important with how you interact with radiographs and patients, you can fast forward through this part. But here's the quick introduction. The term that's often used is called the silhouette sign. And to discuss it, I have to review real quickly the densities that we can see by radiographs. We can actually only see a couple different densities or degrees of whiteness uh, on a radiograph. Bone is the densest that is normally inside a person. Now metal is even denser, but of course it's not naturally present. So bone is pretty white because it's pretty dense. Now soft tissue, which includes things predominantly made of water, made up of muscle or other softer parts of the body, have less white, they're less dense than bone, like the heart here. Now even less dense is fat. We're talking about pure fat. So if you have fat immediately below the skin in an area, like here towards the shoulder region on this patient, that will be even darker, less dense. That is fat. And the last density that we can see by radiographs is air. Here's air outside the patient. We also see air in the lungs. That's why they're pretty dark. So four main densities. So the silhouette sign involves these densities. And it says the following. If you have an interface between two structures, here's the lung and the heart, if they're touching each other, if that edge is oriented so we can see it, so here as we look at the front of this patient, that edge is oriented so we see the heart to one side, the lung to the other. If it's oriented in this way and the two structures are different densities out of those four, then we can see a line. Maybe that sounds sort of obvious, but we can actually see the heart versus the lung and that edge because the lung is less dense than the heart. Here we can see the edge of that rib, a bone, from the soft tissue near it, probably muscle, because it's oriented in the right way and there are different densities. Or here we can see the edge of the skin and the air outside the patient, different densities. We cannot see a line of two different structures if they're the same density. So here is the top of the diaphragm and the heart. There is actually 
two different structures right there, but we can't see the line. That line is silhouetted because they are the same density. Okay? Or here, the edge of the aorta and the wall of the trachea, which is the large airway in the chest. We can't see that because they're the same density. So this concept, this silhouette sign, where we lose that edge, is discussed in pneumonias pretty frequently. So notice here, we have increased opacity, increased whiteness in the bottom of the right lung, which is the left side of this picture. And that increased whiteness in the lung, we can't actually see the edge of it near the heart. And that is because this opacity, which is a pneumonia, has the same density as the heart. That means they're the same density and it means they're touching. So that concept tells us which lobe it's in. If we look at the side of a patient, this is a lateral view radiograph. We see only one lobe has lots of contact with the heart. That's the right middle lobe. That's labeled RML here. And that lobe normally is right next to the heart. That means that pneumonia had to be in that lobe touching the heart and we can't see the border. Notice this pneumonia on the right side of the patient. We can see the heart border there. That means that dense pneumonia is not touching the heart. What we can't see well in this case is the diaphragm. Now I know you can see it some, there is still a dome there, but it's sort of partially hidden. And that's because the pneumonia is in a lobe that's touching the diaphragm. We'll go back to that lateral view and it's the right lower lobe, the RLL in this picture, that primarily touches the diaphragm. So again, this is the concept that helps us figure out which lobe. Sometimes this is discussed and that is how it works. So the other topic I wanted to mention real quick before we talk about different types of infections seen on radiographs is the concept of air bronchograms. So here's a very sick patient there's lots of material filling the lungs, so the lungs are very white. But this is a good example of seeing air inside the airways, also called air bronchograms. So notice, because there is so much opacity in the lungs, we can actually make out a tubular, darker structure right there. And it actually goes up towards the patient's head. Here I'll highlight it with some extra arrows you can see this tubular low density structure going up. And in fact, if we look elsewhere, we can see some other tubular structures. These are the air bronchograms. Now the airways, what takes the air we breathe into our lungs, of course has air in it normally, but we don't see that because the lung has air, the airways taking the air has air. But if we have a lot of material, which is filling up the distal part of the lungs, the, the part furthest away from our mouth, if that part of the lung has increased material or pneumonia or something like that, then you can actually see the air in the airways stand out from all the whiteness around it. That's an air bronchogram. Now, there is actually a couple different things that can cause that increased whiteness, but still leave air in the airways but infection is one of the most common, so it's often discussed in this topic. All right, now we can orient you to types of pneumonias that do show up on x-rays. There are four main types, lobar pneumonia, bronchopneumonia, and I'm gonna put aspiration, where patients not intentionally have contents that they eat or swallow, or that was in their stomach, come up, and then go into the lung where it doesn't belong. There's also atypical or viral infections, and finally, fungal infections. So lobar pneumonia is pneumonia that involves a lobe. It's a nice name for it. I showed you an example already. This right upper lobar pneumonia makes the right upper lobe very white. 
and it's almost the entire lobe. Some infections do this specifically, like these two types of infections, strep and Klebsiella. A bronchopneumonia is probably a bit more common. So this is an infection that involves airways, the tubes that take the air out to the lung, and the distal lung. So it's not as dense. It also doesn't only stay in one lobe. It can sometimes go to other lobes. So here, this is nodules and some of the airways. Certain infections tend to cause this type of bronchopneumonia, like Staph aureus or Pseudomonas, but there's many. Now I put aspiration in this category. Okay, aspiration, where these contents end up in the lung, but they're originally in the stomach or swallowed. It happens for patients in nursing homes or patients who are sedated with anesthesia or are in a traumatic accident or who pass out. And we see it in this case, it goes with gravity. So it's in the lowest part of the right lung here, that increased opacity. Now, it's a complex topic with aspiration, whether or not the lung is just inflamed, called pneumonitis, or actually is infected, called a pneumonia, which is the purpose of this module. Sometimes it's a mixture of both or predominantly one. So for example, here's a really bad aspiration. It's the middle part of the lungs and the lower part on both sides. Next up is atypical infections. Now these have a different type of spread in the lungs and viral infections are the most common. The classic descriptor is a diffuse opacity, so it affects almost all the parts of the lungs. Here, there's increased whiteness on both sides. This is a pneumocystis infection, a type of atypical infection. This is in a very young patient. Here again, we see diffuse opacity on both sides. This is one of the most common viral infections, influenza, very common during the winter time. Now, sometimes atypical infections don't have to be so homogenous, so smoothly white throughout the lungs. Here it's whiter in some parts and darker in other parts. This is also a type of virus, uh, and it just shows the different patterns we might see. And the last type of pneumonia I wanted to mention is fungal infections. Now, these can be very serious infections. Now the classic descriptor is there's parts of the lung that are really infected a lot, so very white, okay? We call it very dense. But then there's parts of the lung that is not affected as much. So here are the top part of the lungs, the apex or apices are darker. So this is a very severe infection caused by fungus. Now I showed you some of the classic appearances of different types of infections, but it turns out there's lots of overlap. Different types of infections might look the same, or one type of infection might have different appearances. So here are some examples on this slide. So it's actually quite difficult, but I showed you some of the classic appearances. Now, this was just a touch on the various main categories of infections. But for chest radiologists who look at these kinds of images every day and see all kinds of different infections, infections, there are different types of appearances. So here in the top part of the right lung, you see lots of whiteness. But do you see that almost circle-like shape? That's actually a cavity where an infection was so severe it actually destroyed part of the lung, and now there's this open space there. Sometimes infections can do this. This is a very severe type of infection where it's spread through the blood and deposited all over the lungs. But instead of a smooth increased whiteness like before, this is many tiny nodules. So some infections have this sort of uncommon appearance. Or notice here, we have a round increased whiteness. Do you see it? It's on the right side of the patient, which is the left side of this picture, in the middle of the lung. But also the rest of the lung doesn't look normal either. 
This is the only CT I'm showing here, but this was actually an infection that has one big focal spot. Again, it's on the left side of this picture, which is the right side of the patient. You see a round circle, but there's also many tiny dots. So this is another type of way infections might present. So it might have a large part that's involved and then small parts where it spreads. So this is a very complex topic. So I do want to highlight, even though this is an introduction, the world of infections and how we see them in imaging is very complex. But this was a quick introduction. When we do see something abnormal in the lung, we often have to say that it could be lots of different infections. That's part of the job of a radiologist to say what they might be. But also, we have to consider something might be in the lung that is not an infection. And there's lots of different diseases that show up on imaging that aren't infection. So sometimes we have to figure out if we even think it's an infection or something else. All right, so that's it for this quick introduction to how infections look on chest radiographs. We're really happy you joined us. Please do check out the rest of the modules in this curriculum. Please check out the Society for Thoracic Radiology's website. And please let us know if you have any questions or comments about this curriculum. Thank you again for joining us. This was Dave Nager from the University of California, San Francisco.